but a name that is getting an awful lot of buzz, especially here, the most conservative part of the entire country. Would you like to count the number of liberal and NDP MPs out of 14? None. Would you like to look at the polling? Consistently over 52, 55% of people here vote conservative federally. It's the way we are. So who's the candidate getting the buzz? Leslin Lewis, a Toronto candidate, a lawyer, a law degree at Osgoode, recently got a PhD in international law from that university, also has a master's in environmental studies and an MBA. She has run in the past as a conservative federally, but her profile as somebody who is not an MP or doesn't have a national position at this point has been relatively low. But why are people talking about her? Well, we're going to determine that now. Ms. Lewis, thank you so much for taking our call. It's great to finally chat. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, you came to Canada as a little one, five years old, um, six kids in the family. You're the baby. Family came from Jamaica. What's your experience in the Conservative Party that differentiates you from those other candidates? Well, I think that my experience is that I just have a great story of the Canadian dream of why my parents left their warm country comfortable to come here. And it was because they wanted the opportunities for their children and they wanted to give their children even a greater uh, chance of succeeding than they had. And so Canada was a beacon of hope and opportunity in the best country in the world. And they came here because of the, the Canadian values, democracy, freedom, uh, respect for the rule of law. And some of these things we didn't have back in our country. Um, and so this is why they came here. And so this is also why I'm running, because I would like to see us maintain those things. And I've been watching over the last five years where, you know, Trudeau has been telling us we don't have a Canadian identity. And these are things that my parents came here because that identity was so great. And what we stood for is so great in Canada. And so I want to maintain that. In terms of conservative values, you have been unapologetically and pretty clearly outspoken, whereas the two supposed front runners uh, tend to mute and moderate. Is it a risk that you're too conservative? No, I think it's a risk that they are not conservative enough because right now I am doing very, very well in being true to the conservative values that brought my parents here and and that I was raised on. You know, we were I was raised in a pretty religious family and um, we respected God and we respected our country and those things came first and our responsibility, our personal responsibility. Those are things that we were taught. And we were taught not to take handouts from the government unless you were you needed it, and you know there was a, a reason for it. But as you know, someone who's able-bodied, we were always taught to make the biggest contribution to the country and put your put your country first. And so that's still just things that are natural to me. And I think that our party has bought into a false media narrative that if you if you aspire to be conservative and and um, invoke those values that that, you know, the, the country won't accept you. And I don't buy that narrative. And so that's what I've pushed forward. Leslin Lewis in Toronto, Conservative Party leadership candidate. You've never held elective office. Is, is that an impediment for a leadership campaign? Well, it, it has actually worked out to be a benefit, a blessing in my um campaign because people see me as very authentic. I, you know, I answer questions directly. I don't have scripts for it. I just, you know, I tell people why I'm running and I'm very forthright about the fact that I'm concerned about the direction of the country. I am very concerned that the Canada that I grew up in will not be here. And I also have great experience. I've, you know, I've worked in business. I've built a business. I've mortgaged my home to pay salaries for my employees when when times were tough in 2009. I made sure that I created opportunities for Canadians. I've taught the next generation of Canadians 
institutions and universities. I've volunteered in very high risk um, communities that, um, you know, high crime communities. I've volunteered in jails. I've done things that the average Canadian respects. And I've worked hard at the EDAs. And I believe that the EDA level is what's sustaining the party. And so I respect people in the grassroots. And people appreciate that. And so they see the skills that I have in international law, representing uh, Canadian corporations selling their products abroad. Um, they see that as highly transferable skills and the skills that we need. And actually, those are kind of antithetical to what our, our current prime minister has. And so people see it as a breath of fresh air that somebody's going in with business experience. What is Mr. Trudeau the most vulnerable on? If you were the leader standing across uh, at your podium and his podium in an election, where would you find him most vulnerable? Well, there's a lot of areas that I find him most vulnerable. I think, you know, just our foreign relations, that's, that's something that I, I believe that we have to restore um, respect for our country around the world. Uh, I think our economy, we haven't had cost and impact assessments of certain things in our economy. For example, people want to know what the cost of COVID is going to be. And we're not saying that we didn't need to make these concessions and, and, and these handouts. But what we're saying is we want to know what the cost is. Is it going to be another tax? We, we need to know exactly um, what our government is doing. And so I think he has also a lot of vulnerabilities is that he's been successful in dividing people. And I'm a unifier. So I'm bringing people together and I'm saying, you know what, Canadians, we are the best and we're the best in the world. And yes, we can get better, but I'm not going to dump on Canadians and make them feel that our country is not a great country. And so he's vulnerable at that. As a black woman and a conservative, I mean, the conservatives had a female leader in the very short Kim Campbell duration as prime minister, but a, a person of color, a female uh, from Metro Toronto, uh, that's a new or a different thing. How does the conservative party accept that? Um, well, I've been in the party a while now. It's not as if I'm just a newcomer in the party. I've done really, you know, heavy things in the party, like fundraising and, um, you know, been on EDAs. And in 2015, the Honorable Stephen Harper requested that I help him in a writing that was plagued with a scandal. And we needed to do work really fast to save the reputation of the party and to make sure that we had a strong content. Um, like we were strong contenders in the writing. And so I jumped in last minute and ran a campaign in 2015 in five weeks and, and did very well, got one of the highest ratings um, in that writing's history, even though I didn't have any early election votes because I came in afterwards. And so um, I'm not new in the party. I think people are used to me in the party. And you know what? Conservatives are looking for values. They're looking for people who represent their values and who is not a afraid to stand up for what they believe in and who's done the work in, in making sure that they're qualified to represent them and who's not afraid. And so they don't see, nobody sees really my race and I don't see theirs. And we just look at doing the best for our country. Leslin Lewis is in Toronto, conservative leadership candidate. So I'm curious on your own participation. I mean, when somebody's winning or running for a leadership, you're in it to win it. But then people say, uh, if you didn't win it, you would be an exceptional member of an inner cabinet. And to do that, you should seek a seat uh, in any event. So are you going to seek a seat in the next election? Well, absolutely. But I also feel that you know, I, I came and, and thought that I would even make the high qualifications. People thought that I would have dropped out, and I kept fighting, I kept pushing, I kept putting my message out there so that conservatives can hear the message. And when they do hear my message, they stand behind me. And so I think that I have a very strong chance at winning, and the media is just catching on to that right now to say she's a strong contender because I have the true conservative values, and I'm somebody who's going to courageously defend our values and our country. On the so the so called social values, the media is unrelenting, and uh, you've been pretty outspoken on uh, gender selection abortions, which have become a huge issue in certain communities in Canada. Uh, you've talked about uh, human rights involving women. 
But as a conservative, if you start getting into the so-called social issues, doesn't that become toxic? No, that's not. I don't believe that's true. That's another myth that has been put out there by the media. And to be honest with you, I'm probably as much as a fiscal conservative than a social conservative. And that's re- really what I thought I was until people started to label me a social conservative. But and I have no problem with that. Um, but the policies that I have selected are actually very unifying. Canadians have been fed a lot of misinformation by um you know, just information out there. And I have actually uh, put policies forward with no hidden agenda. And I've looked at policy that unify Canadians. Like over 90% of Canadians believe that a, a fetus shouldn't be terminated because it's a girl only. And so that's something that's unifying. And um, I don't believe that just because we have uh, social conservative values that all those values are only attributable to one segment of uh, the conservative uh, po- voting population. Uh, I think that there are things that unify us, and that's what I focused on. Last word. I have been refreshingly uh, so overwhelmed and impressed by you uh, as a result of the social media. When you disagree with someone, they have triggered you. They must be silenced. <laughs> God, it's, it's a mad world we live in. You've done a great job of stepping toward critics and engaging in a debate. Does that make a difference? I think it does. I think it shows that we can we can disagree and we can have dissenting opinions and still be respectful. And that's what I'm trying to put forward. I'm very concerned about our canceled culture approach, and I'm very concerned about it on just our democracy. And I don't. I want people to be able to trust democracy. So even if somebody's putting forward an opinion or a belief that different from yours. Let the democratic process unfold. Let's talk about it. Let's have discussions. Let's stop putting um, all these laws and regulations in that silence people and that criminalize people just for innocent speech. And so I want to get back to the way that we were when I was a kid. We Sometimes we said things that were a little bit offensive um, and they weren't meant to hurt. And so we apologized and we moved on. And I just think that we've just become too sensitive and it's debilitating to our progress, to our growth. And I would like to see us get back to the way, the, the good old days, the way, the way we were, respectful, giving people equal dignity and respect and treating them with equal dignity and respect. Great chatting with you this morning. Uh, thank you so much. Last word to you. What do you want Saskatchewan listeners to know? I want Saskatchewan listeners to realize that I recognize that their their farmers are the bedrock of our society. I'm very concerned about our global supply um, chain, and I'm very concerned that we've taken um, farmers for granted. And a lot of my policies have been focused on that. I am going to eliminate the carbon tax because I don't see it as having a good outcome for the environment for consumers and for producers. And I want to make sure that um, can, that the products that are produced in your province can get to market. And so I'd like to open up those channels and get your products not only to our, our national market, but internationally. Our Pulse Farmers products come emanating therefrom, I'd like to see them get out internationally and to really help the, the province develop and put some real tangible solutions in place. Good chatting. Safe travels, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Leslin Lewis in Toronto, uh, leadership candidate for the Conservative Party, uh, lawyer in Toronto, just recently finished a uh, PhD in international law, also has a uh, master's degree in environmental studies and an MBA.